Welcome once again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 17 verses 10 through 15 and I am very excited over this. I've been looking forward to this video for a while now. We're talking about what is a Berean, why you should be a Berean, and how to be a Berean. And along the way, we are going to extract a few little nuggets of spiritual gold. Let's get right into this. This is Acts chapter 17, verse 10. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. Now you might say, what is Berea? Well, Berea is a place. It's a city. Now in the past few chapters, we have read how Paul has traveled around to a few different places. Let's do a quick little recap here. Let's look at the map and see where he's been. Okay, here's our map. This is a map of Paul's second and third missionary journeys. You can see down here, here's the Red Sea. Up here, here's the, here's the Mediterranean Sea, the Aegean Sea, okay? And uh, up here, it, the, it doesn't show it on the map right now, but up here would be Italy up here. Okay, so Paul started his missionary journeys here in Antioch. Now, right now, uh, we're following the blue line. We're following the blue arrows. So he went from Antioch to Tarsus to Derby. He went from Derby over to Lystra, to Iconium, to Antioch and Pisidia. And then he went from there all the way over to Troas, from Troas over to Philippi, from Philippi through Amphipolis, through Apollonia to Thessalonica. And here we are arriving at Berea. So when they arrived, that is arrived at Berea, they went into the Jewish synagogue. I always like to bring this up and I'll bring it up again. They didn't go into a church, okay? They didn't even try to plant a church, so to speak, okay? They didn't do what a lot of Christian evangelists do today. You know, go into a place and try to, try to win people over to Jesus and then plant a church. That's not what they did. They went right into the Jewish synagogue. Verse 11, now these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Now Thessalonica was like the happening place in Macedonia in those days. It was like the most populous, it was like the, the business hub of the area. But it says that those who were in Berea, the Bereans, were more noble than those in Thessalonica. How's that? says right here, in that they received the word, the word meaning the message of the apostles, with all readiness of mind, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Okay, let's get a good grip of what's going on here. Here's Paul and here's the crew. They come into Berea and they are in the Jewish synagogue preaching the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Now it says the Bereans were more noble. It doesn't say they were more evil. It doesn't say they were more wicked. It doesn't say they were more wrong. They were more in error. No, on the contrary. It praised them. It says they were more noble. They were more noble than the other guys. In that, they received the word with all readiness of mind, examining the scriptures daily to see whether or not those things were so. In other words, Paul came in. Paul preached the message of Yeshua. Paul preached the gospel. They received it with readiness of mind. In other words, they're like, hey, we want to hear every word you have to say there, Paul. We want to hear everything, okay? We don't want to ignore anything. We're ready to hear what you got to say. But we're not going to believe it unless we examine the scriptures ourselves to make sure what you're saying lines up with the scriptures. We are going to examine the scriptures and we're doing it daily. We're staying on it. We're staying on this until we find out, Paul, whether or not what you say is true. That is huge. That is huge. You see, Paul came with his message to Berea. Most Christians today, you know, every word that Paul said was basically the word of God to them, okay? A, a lot of Christians today, especially the evangelical conservative Christians, they're like, the whole, you know, all of, all of Paul's epistles, it's all the word of God, okay? The men of Berea, the Bereans were not so. 
The Bereans were not so. They were like, okay, Paul, we're ready to hear everything you have to say, but we are going to prove you either right or wrong. We are going to take what you say and we're going to put it up against the scriptures. What scriptures were they talking about? Big, big question. Why do I ask that question? Because, you know, they didn't have any New Testament back in those days. There was no New Testament canon back in those days. Don't forget, this is a Jewish synagogue, okay? The scriptures here in this context is the Tanakh and other sacred texts, such as those we find in the Dead Sea Scrolls. These are considered to be the scriptures. The scriptures that they're talking about here are the scriptures that were written well before Jesus was ever born. These are the scriptures they put up against Paul. Paul, what you got to say sounds good, but we're not going to believe it until we put up everything you say. We're going to take every one of your points and we're going to put it up against the scriptures, the Tanakh. Now you might say, well, what was the outcome? Did they reject Paul because Paul teaches New Testament and then the scriptures they had were Old Testament? Not at all. Let's read it. Verse 12, many of them therefore believed also of the prominent Greek women and not a few men. Why did they believe? Because they saw in the so-called Old Testament and other sacred texts that what Paul was saying was in line with the scriptures, was in line with the Tanakh. That should tell you something huge because that should tell you what Paul's message was really all about. That should tell you what Paul really means. Most Christians today, when they preach against the Tanakh, when they preach against the Torah, when they preach against the law of God, when they say, oh, we don't go by the law no more, they always quote Paul. They always quote Paul. But obviously, Paul's message was not against the Torah as most people believe. Because if it were, the Bereans would have rejected him very fast. They put Paul's message up against Torah. They put Paul's message up against the Nevi'im. They put Paul's message up against the Ketavim. They put Paul's message up against all of the scriptures they had in those days. None of which was the New Testament books. Verse 13, but when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was proclaimed by Paul at Berea also, they came therefore likewise agitating the multitudes. Then the brothers immediately sent out Paul to go as far as to the sea, and Silas and Timothy still stayed there. But those who escorted Paul brought him as far as Athens, receiving a commandment to Silas and Timothy that they should come to him very quickly, they departed. So the questions we asked at the beginning, what is a Berean? A Berean is somebody who has readiness of mind to hear a message that might otherwise be rejected. Like It might seem like a new message, but they have readiness of mind. They're ready to hear. They're ready to take what is being said, to respectfully hear the preacher out. Number two, they will take that message and they will put it up against the pre-New Testament scriptures. They will put it up against all of the scriptures that the Jews held dear before the coming of Messiah. A Berean is someone who tests everything they hear. Test it with the scriptures, especially the so-called Old Testament scriptures. That is a true Berean. Now let's clarify it a little bit more. Let's boil it down a little bit more. Let's make it more specific because here, a true Berean in this context specifically did this to Paul. So a Berean is someone who hears Paul's message and does not accept it if it goes against the Tanakh. A Berean, I'll say it again, is someone who takes Paul's message and tests it, does not accept it unless they can prove that it is compatible with the Tanakh. Question number two is, why should you be a Berean? 
Well, you see, it says that the Bereans were more noble than the rest. They were praised, okay? Nobody condemned them for what they were doing. Nobody looked down on them for what they were doing. I know some people today might say, oh, don't, don't, uh, don't question Paul. What Paul says is, you know, every, every word of his letters, it's, it's the word of God. But they did question Paul and God had no problem with it. No problem with it because they put it up against the scriptures specifically and ex and especially the scriptures that were written BC. This is what makes them more noble. They were ready to hear something that may, may be new, may be a little bit offensive to somebody. And they tested it thoroughly with the Old Testament scriptures, the Tanakh. This made them stronger in the faith. This made them more noble than the rest. Number three, how does a person be a Berean? How do you become a Berean? You do what the Bereans did. When you read the scriptures, especially the letters of Paul, because remember now, this is what the Bereans did to Paul. They didn't do it to just any preacher and every preacher. They did it specifically to Paul. And there is a very good reason why God made it so. So how can we do that to Paul today? How can we test his message today? Obviously, you know, Paul's not still traveling around today, but he is in a sense. He is traveling around still through his writings, okay? Through his epistles. The word epistle just means letter, okay? When you read the epistles of Paul, you're reading the letters of Paul. In some circumstances, you know, letter to Timothy, letter to Titus, personal letters. I mean, you are reading somebody else's mail, okay? When you read the letters of Paul, when you read the epistles of Paul, Test it like a Berean. Put it up against the Old Testament text. Don't accept anything that seems to go against the Tanakh. Don't accept anything that goes against the Tanakh. That is how you be a Berean. And I encourage you all to be Bereans. Be noble. Be smart. Be swift. When you're reading the epistles of Paul, and you know, these are the epistles that most Christians put their faith in, not necessarily the teachings of Jesus. When you read the epistles of Paul, you put it up against the Tanakh. And if there's anything that seems to be contrary to the Tanakh, if there's anything that seems to be contrary to the Torah, the Nevi'im, the Ketavim, you better seriously either question Paul's doctrine or at least your interpretation thereof. Be a Berean. Seek the truth. And of course, you cannot seek the truth without seeking God. And as I always say, seek God with all your heart. Put aside your pride. Accept the fact that you could have believed something that just wasn't true all of your life. Put aside your pride. Seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.